Joseph Cartagena, better known as Fat Joe, was born in South Bronx, New York, on August 19, 1970. He successfully left behind a life of crime to experience commercial success as a rapper, alongside a collective of artists known as Terror Squad. While he made us lean back and had the whole world bop into songs like What's Love and All the Way Up, there's been one woman who has stuck by his side through it all, and her name is Lorena Rios. According to People Magazine, the couple tied the knot in 1995, but after doing some digging, well, the math ain't mathin'. But before we jump into other people's business, be sure to head on over to rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of goodies, including our brand new chicken and waffles popcorn. This video wouldn't be complete without a backstory, so let's take a trip back to December 1989, when 19-year-old Fat Joe welcomed a son named Joey with his ex-girlfriend. Joey was born with Down syndrome, and in his memoir we've linked for you in the description box, Joe wrote that his ex abandoned their son on the day he was born because she was so overwhelmed by the idea of raising a child with special needs. As for Joe, he said in an interview that he was unable and unwilling to fully understand the extent of his son's condition. He said, I didn't really want to hear it. It was so traumatic for me. Years later, his son Joey was also diagnosed with autism. Joe was still young and he wasn't prepared to be a single father, so his parents stepped in to help him raise his son full time. As of this video, Joey still lives with Joe's parents. Joe is financially able to give Joey the care and love he deserves, but his parents still refuse to allow Joey to live anywhere other than under their roof. Under the moniker Fat Joe the Gangsta, he released the song Flo Jo. To promote the single, he and his crew, including Raul Conde and his manager Steve, took a trip to Miami. Now, in his memoir, Joe doesn't get specific. He only refers to the time as the early 90s. But since Flo Jo was released in 1993 and he went to Miami to specifically promote the song after it was released, then it only makes sense that the trip took place in 1993, right? So anyway, while there, Steve mentioned that some friends from New York had moved to Miami and they were all going to meet up. They arrived at a parking lot outside a club and a car pulled up. A girl stepped out of the car, and in his memoir, Joe wrote that as she stood in front of the headlights, she looked like a superstar standing on stage. She was wearing a pair of blue jeans, and Joe couldn't stop staring at her fatty. He had never seen a Colombian woman before, and he had never seen a woman with such a big donk. He was fantasizing about her when he accidentally blurted out, Oh my God, she is beautiful. When you meet the person you love, a switch goes off where you say, this is it. 19-year-old Lorena introduced herself to 22-year-old Joe. Steve, who considered Lorena as his little sister, immediately told Joe to back off. In an episode of Unsung, Lorena said she fell in love at first sight, and Steve couldn't do anything to keep them away from each other. As they chatted, Joe said he was blown away by their conversation. He thought everything that came out of her mouth was simply amazing. After their night out, they went back to his hotel to hang out, and they passed by two other women in the lobby, whom Joe had planned to spend time with before he met Lorena. Lorena thought he was a player, and Joe said he was thinking, I wish I could trade them for you right now. Lorena made it clear from the jump that she didn't like men with big mouths, and if she found out that Joe told anyone about anything that went down between them, she would never talk to him again. Joe played it off like he didn't understand what she was trying to say. Nothing happened that night, but they met up again while he was in Miami, and he took her to the movies. They shared their first kiss, and Lorena told him again that she didn't like guys with big mouths, and if he told their business to anyone, she would never speak to him again. When the date ended, Joe ran back to his friends and bragged about how he slobbed her down. The next day, he tried calling her, and she didn't pick up. Apparently, word had gotten back to Lorena that Joe was telling their business, and she was done with him. When he ran into her on the streets of Miami, he apologized. He told her she was so beautiful he had no choice but to brag about her to his friends. He convinced her to give him another chance, and she agreed. His extended trip to Miami was coming to an end, and after two weeks of hanging out with Lorena, he was getting frustrated that she wasn't giving up the draws. He told himself that if he didn't hit it soon, she was just wasting his time and he would move on. 
After another night out, he took her back to his hotel, and in his memoir, he wrote that they stayed in the room for three days and passionately destroyed it. He and his crew headed back to New York, and he tried to play it cool by not calling her for two weeks. When Lorena finally got a hold of him, she said, Are you trying to play me? You think you're just going to hit it and not call me ever again? I'm coming up to New York, and you better come get me at the airport. Now, in his memoir, Joe revealed that he had just broken up with the mother of his second child named Ryan. And this is where things start to get a little confusing. In his memoir, Joe doesn't confirm Ryan's birthday, and we think we know why. From our online investigation, we've concluded that Ryan was most likely born in 1995, and People magazine even published an article that verifies that Ryan is six years younger than Joe's eldest son, Joey. So if Joey was born in 89, then that confirms that Ryan was born in 95. But wait, Joe met Lorena in Miami in 1993. So did he cheat on Lorena and get another woman pregnant? Was he two-timing both women? Were he and Lorena on a breakup at the time Ryan was conceived? We may never know the truth. Joe did confirm that he was very wild around the time Ryan was born. He had become even more successful in the music industry, and women were throwing themselves at him. He would come home with dozens of phone numbers in his pockets, which angered Ryan's mother. In his memoir, he wrote, I was driving girls crazy out in the Bronx and throughout New York. But either way, Lorena treats both of Joe's children like her own, and she eventually moved in with him. Joe said they were madly in love, and he described her as his soulmate. The feds were going after people in Joe's crew at one point, and many of his friends got sentenced to more than 65 years behind bars on RICO charges. Even though he left the streets behind a few years prior, he heard rumors that the feds were coming for him next. Naturally, this made him extremely paranoid that his freedom would be ripped away from him. Lorena was visiting some family in New York when Joe stopped by and walked in on 20 women cutting up substances on a table. He later discovered that Lorena's dad was a big-time substance dealer in Colombia. Lorena had grown up around it and wasn't phased by it at all. In his memoir, Joe implied that Lorena was involved in that lifestyle to some capacity as well. Knowing that the feds were rounding up everyone around him, Joe pleaded with Lorena to get out of the game, and she eventually did. It was too late for her dad, though. Her dad got locked up for 10 years. Upon his release, he was deported back to Colombia. Joe was still hearing rumors that he was next to get locked up, and he knew that if it happened, a woman as beautiful as Lorena would get snatched up by the next man with a quickness. So he tried to dump her, but she refused to walk away. To show her loyalty to him, she got the words Joey Crack tatted on her lovely lady lump. The feds never came for him, and he continued down the straight and narrow path by making money from legitimate sources. By 2005, he and Lorena were living primarily in Miami, and his son Ryan moved out there to live with them as well. Now, you know how we keep mentioning that Joe likes to gloss over certain dates in his memoir? Well, one date he happily discloses is the day he and Lorena conceived their daughter in Jamaica. As they inched closer and closer to Lorena's due date, Joe got more and more worried. Just a few years prior, his sister was given an epidural, and instead of numbing her from the waist down, they numbed her from the waist up. In an interview, Joe said after spending a year in a coma, his sister and the baby passed away. He didn't want Lorena and their baby to suffer the same fate. He tried his best to be a supportive partner, especially since Lorena was worried about having a safe delivery as well. On May 4, 2006, they welcomed their daughter, Azzy. Things were quiet for their family up until 2008. An insider reached out to the YBF website and revealed that Emily Bustamante, also known as Fabulous's on-again, off-again girlfriend, had allegedly been Joe's side piece for years. The insider added that the T was well known throughout the hip-hop circles in NYC. The website added, We wonder what Lorena thinks about all that, even though we all heard about Mrs. Lorena having Benzino as her side dish recently. And then in 2012, there were rumors that Lorena was filing for divorce after close to two decades together. But don't you have to be married in order to file for divorce? Hmm. Now, those of you who watch our videos religiously know that we can pretty much find out anything about any celeb. 
And when it comes to Joe and Lorena, we are unable to verify whether they're legally married or not. Unsurprisingly, in his memoir, Joe doesn't mention anything about how he proposed, their wedding day, or the day they tied the knot, although he does refer to her as his wife. Tattletale's website wrote that their sources confirmed that Joe and Lorena have lived together for years but haven't walked down the aisle. The sources also stated that this isn't uncommon or out of the ordinary since Joe's parents have allegedly been together for years and haven't bothered to get married either. So back to their 2012 breakup. Insiders claim that Lorena was fed up with Joe constantly cheating on her. Those of you who watched our Erica Mena video might remember that Erica even claimed Joe tried to get with her when he was with Lorena. We'll drop a link to that video in the description box. According to sources, the catalyst of the breakup was a woman that lived in Dubai, and Joe was allegedly flying her out and even accompanied her to an NBA game. Pictures of Joe and the woman were allegedly sent to Lorena by a terror squad associate. After news of the breakup, there were rumors that Lorena was in talks with Mona Scott Young to join Love & Hip Hop New York. However, Lorena and Joe eventually reconciled. Lorena has continued to stay by his side ever since, even through all of his legal issues. He settled a lawsuit that accused him of underpaying the late big pun by at least $2 million. And he was hit with several IRS tax liens totaling a million dollars. He even served four months in federal prison for tax evasion back in 2013. After close to 30 years together, Joe and Lorena have found a way to make their relationship work on their terms. We wish them and their family nothing but the best. If you enjoyed this video, follow us on TikTok for more content, like daily news updates and mini documentaries. And as always, thanks for watching RRG.